The second incident or episode that is worth recalling was when the parliament, India's parliament, <coughs> sat in the wee hours of end of December to debate whether the Lokpal bill should have this feature or that feature, because Anna was on strike and people were agitated. But what the party leaders were saying inside the parliament was fascinating. What they were saying was that we are the elected ones, almost we the chosen ones, we are the elected ones, who must legislate inside the parliament, debate on what features the Lokpal bill should have, should happen inside the parliament by elected members of parliament. It's not a debate that should happen in public spaces. What was labeled sometimes as streets and footpaths. This was the first time that Indian parliament, Indian democracy, Indian parliament, publicly took a position that it had a legislative responsibility which could not be debated or consulted outside. So you want to make the law, come inside parliament. That was the message. And across the parties, Congress, BJP, CPM, etc. So, when the Lokpal bill did not get enacted when there was sluggishness in the political, formal political system. A big debate took place inside the India Against Corruption movement, <coughs> and a substantial section of that movement decided to form a political party. So it was in 2012. August 2012, I think 15th August was used as a symbol, it's a day of independence, that the Aam Aadmi Party was floated. And as you know, Anna and some others uh, did not want to be a part of the political party. And uh, Arvind Kejriwal, who was part of the India Against Corruption movement, was involved in various uh, anti corruption activities in Delhi area particularly around PDS and power, electricity, uh, terror, uh, became sort of the face of the Army Party in public arena. And then, as you know, uh, the assembly elections took place in December 2013. And uh, to the surprise of Army Party itself, they managed to get 28 out of 70 seats in Delhi's assembly. The BJP got 32 and uh, Congress got 7 and there were 8, Congress got 8 and there were 2, 3 other semi-independent, semi-other party kind of JDU and this guy. Their arrival in the formal political party arena was a was an amazing event because during the same period in November December 2013 three other assemblies went to poll Rajasthan Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and Bari Chhattisgarh both Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan BJP won Hanstan Rajasthan they even got three fourth majority they didn't count it. Now, there was a lot of public discourse whether Aam Aadmi Party should form the government even if they did not have majority. And because in the formulation of the party itself, they used to distance themselves both from Congress and BJP, because those two parties were called mainstream equally corrupt parties. Uh, 
there was a lot of public debate whether they should seek support from any of those ostensibly corrupt parties in order to form the government. You may remember that Congress has a long history of setting up governments and putting them down. Even when they are very small and weak, like during the Janta Party days. They were responsible for encouraging, challenging to rebel against Maharaj Desai and then pull down Charan Singh. In 1980, once again, Indira Gandhi came to power with the vast majority. And then in 1989, first uh, you had VP Singh championing the cause of corruption. Congress allowed some support, formation of them, put them down. And in 1991, uh, Narsimha Rao from Congress became the Prime Minister. And then again in 96, we had two, three, two, two uh, prime ministers and uh, again they were pulled down effectively. Uh, so Congress has a long, long, long history of playing the, the formal party politics and parliamentary democracy game. So they happily agreed to support Ahmadi party and lo and behold, Arvind Kejriwal became the chief minister. Before the year was out in 2013. Now, of course, <clears throat> launching an anti corruption movement and demanding that a strong Lokpal bill or ombudsman bill is made or legislated is one thing, and governing by sitting on a chair is quite another. In fact, many of us who get used to opposing don't know how to propose because opposing is the dominant posture. So what did Aam Army Party government do? You know all that, but I will just illustrate a couple of points. First, they proclaimed that they will legislate a new low power By that time, Parliament had legislated a Lokpal bill. A state assembly cannot legislate a bill in Indian constitution which overrides a national bill. So you needed to deal with the Parliament somehow to change the bill. Or, so they said, no, no, no. They didn't even refer to that. Second, they announced, so this was a problem of governance with the cheer above. Delhi assembly, and national parliament. You abrogate to yourself what you can do, which is actually the jurisdiction of national parliament. And then they said uh, in every neighborhood there will be mohalla committees or neighborhood committees which will decide on implementation of various service delivery programs. Now they seem to have forgotten in announcing that, that there are municipalities and municipal corporations below them. And all the three municipal corporations of Delhi were ruled by BJP. So you have Congress at the national level, UPA at national level, below you in municipal corporation BJP and you are trying to sometimes reach out to the national level and say we will legislate here and sometimes reach down to municipal level and say we will legislate here. Till some people pointed out that uh, you really can't do that even if you try. And then uh, <clears throat> one of their ministers decided to raid some uh, brothel in the neighborhood where he used to live and uh, mobilized community action to raid the brothel. It was not a brothel, it was a running brothel. And there were some foreign uh, women involved, you must uh, remember that story, African women. And they called the cops and told the cops to arrest them. Now it so transpires that the police commissioner of Delhi 
reports to the Home Minister in the Government of India, not the Chief Minister of India. Yes, there is a confusion over overlapping jurisdictions. True. Should this be cleaned up? Possibly. But you didn't know. Too bad. So by the time the winter in Delhi was receding, you know, Makar Sankranti, 14 January after that, we assume that winter is receding. Uh, the Aam Army Party government was also receding. And then, you know, they resigned. Not only they resigned, which was okay, but they decided at the same time to then launch a nationwide effort in capturing parliamentary seats. So I want to give you a little bit of information as to what happened. In their enthusiasm, Aam Aadmi Party decided to contest more seats in national parliament than even BJP contested. 432 seats, BJP only contested 428. We had 543 seats in our parliament. Out of 432 seats they contested, only 4 seats they won in Punjab. To their surprise, to everybody's surprise, they didn't win a single seat in Delhi, so seven seats, where they had 28 MLAs out of 70, so roughly 40%, exactly 40% of the uh, political voter space they occupy in assembly, but it did not translate into a single seat in parliamentary elections. 413 out of 432 candidates lost their security deposit, which means they got less than one-sixth of the votes. And there were only 21 seats out of 432 they contested, where Aam Army Party candidate came second. And these seats were only in Punjab, Delhi and Chandigarh, and nowhere else. Now, in the process, some of the publicly visible through the national media, voices of Aam Aadmi Party, Kumar Vishwas fighting against Rahul Gandhi, Yogen Yalo, the professor who used to be a sophologist earlier and predict election results and vote percentages, could not predict his own. And where he was contesting from? The upper middle class, the IT savvy, Burgaon constituency next to Delhi. Where million dollar flags are being sold. Dollars, not a piece. He also lost his security deposit in that constituency. Of course, uh, Mera Bhatka contested in Mumbai, lost her security deposit. And the anti-nuclear agitation leader of the Kumar in Tamil Nadu lost security deposit, got less than 2% votes. The combined Voting for NOTA. NOTA was a new innovation, an innovation added to Indian parliamentary voters' democracy. NOTA means none of the above. So this was agreed and legislated. So this time in parliamentary elections, we had one option, NOTA. So you have 15, 16 candidates, and if you don't want any of them, you take NOTA, which means the logic was that people 
in large numbers will do nota nota and the parties will get a message that none of their candidates are right. Lo and behold, the combined total number of nota votes in the country was higher than the combined total of Aam Aadmi Party votes. <laughs> now, in the meanwhile, of course, with 31 percent of the vote, Mr. Narayan Modi, the Prime Minister, BJP <coughs> got 52-53 percent of the seats with only 31 percent of the votes. So, what does it tell us about space for citizen action and political party formation? Two, three quick lessons, and then I'll stop because I want to hear you all have a conversation. First, in the minds of Indian citizens, there are three spaces. Religious leaders, 